I started at Microprose in 1995. I spent about two years with a SID there. And then when Fraxis formed, I came over here in early 1997. I worked on pretty much every game that we've made up to Civ 5. You know, everybody wants to make a sci-fi game. You know, everybody grows up wanting to make sci-fi games. Again, this is, this is for me, having been at Microprose uh, back not too long after it had come out, this is, this is sort of uh, the holy grail. This is what you work 16 years to, to do, so. As far as the art direction goes, we, we really focus very heavily uh, on silhouette, and then we focus on color and, and value. So uh, when we started this process, again, it was one of those things where we wanted this, this, this really familiar environment with a twist of something sort of fantastic in it. One of the keys that we were, were touching on was really trying to push that color to a point where it's a little bit in that uncomfortable space where you, you knew it and you understood it, but it was a little bit off. With the art of the game, you know, something we really tried to focus on, uh, we really wanted to push the cameras. Those moments where the aliens come out of the fog, how terrifying that was in the original, and really try to try to move the camera around as much as we could to make the, the, the experience a, a little more immersive and a little less detached. And so you know, we're doing a lot of things when you go to take a shot, you try and pull the camera in uh, and get a, get a nice view of what's going on, as opposed to keeping you out away from the action. One of the things we try to do visually with the game is uh, it's very much a miniature um, aesthetic. We had that moment when, when somebody had said that you guys look like G.I. Joes, and I'm like, yeah, that's absolutely what they are. And once we did that, um, we really started pushing, pushing more of this miniature style. The soldiers themselves, I think, are really the hardest because they, they have a progression. Finding that, that ground where they look like soldiers, but yet they don't look like space marines, and they're still sci-fi, but not but they don't look like any soldiers you know. We went through iteration after iteration on those to get where we really, really wanted to be with them. And then getting character customization to work pretty well was, was hard too, so that you could actually make guys look different, so that you would never see the same soldier you know, in the same squad. And then we ended up here, and this is pretty much the guy that's in the game. These are some of the weapons. Again, we went with a bit of a chunkier feel, um, and partially because it, it, we didn't want any visual shimmer. I wanted the weapons uh, and characters to read from a distance uh, without getting some sort of speckly kind of, kind of approach. And then some drop, early dropship passes. This one was a really tough one to do. To make a dropship that looks like it could fly as fast as it's supposed to fly, hold the, the number of troops that we needed to hold, yet still make it small enough to fit on the game screen. There was a, some really bizarre challenges with this one. And this was one we had for a little while. This was where we really started to come down on it. And then eventually we ended up here. It's a very quick little painting we had done. And then that is the Sky Ranger in the game. When you go back and look at it, we did this comparison after the fact. You can see actually how close we actually landed from, from the original Sky Ranger without really trying. The Interceptor was sort of the same thing. Again, we go through all these silhouette passes of, of roughs of what we wanted it to be. And again, everybody's seen a, a space fighter plane and trying to ground that in reality was, was a little tough. This is where we kind of came down. This uh, plane can actually do vertical takeoff as well. Uh, we really thought through the mechanics of it. Again, <laughs> you know, we kind of ended up, I think, in a, a fairly good place as far as respecting the original as best we could. You know, we're, very, we're a very design-driven studio and, and, our, and our approach and, and, and art, in a lot of ways, uh, is a reaction to design. We usually start with a doc, uh, so I'll get a write-up from, from the creative director, Jake, and he'll, he'll give me, you know, this is basically what this guy needs to do, this is what's important to the game, and then I, I would take that to my concept guys and say, okay, here we go, this is what we're going to do. By locking the guys in the room, in a room together, and we're working in the same space, it, it makes for less uh, inconsistencies in the arc. Everybody's talking and seeing what everybody's working on, and, and there's less chance of, of somebody getting off track. So that makes it a little easier, especially early in the project. And once that roadmap's set, it goes pretty well. And again, I think if, if, I'm, doing, if I'm doing my job right, you know, initially the idea, the visual idea is, is mine, but, but at, at a certain point in the project, it becomes ours. And uh, it's worked out pretty well so far, I think.